Hey guys, this is the Sedimentary Strata Notes by Mrs. Tietzort, Mrs. Gebhardt, and Mr. Mahoney. Please have your notes page ready to take down some notes. The essential question that you guys should be focusing on while you're watching these notes and writing down is how can we tell the geologic history or story of an area using sedimentary rock layers and fossil evidence? So as we talked about in class, the last class, uh, with the relative and absolute age notes, we know that relative age gives us comparative ages between different objects. So how do we use relative age to tell the story of Earth in particular? Sedimentary rocks give us the best clues. This is because they're deposited in layers, they form very slowly over time, and they can contain fossil information. So here you can see horizontal layers, diagonal layers, and horizontal layers with a little bit of a fold somewhere in some of those there. So uniformitarianism is one of the underlying principles that sort of the basics of this uh, whole sedimentary strata lesson. And basically it's a really big word that means something pretty simple. And that is that the scientific principles and processes that we observe in the world today are the same as what they've always been and that will always be the same. So gravity, for example, has always been and will always be the same. The scientific principles haven't changed. So if it works today, we say, okay, it must have worked a million years ago and it must probably going to work in another million years. So, each one of the photos that are shown here tell the story of the area that they are located in. The photo here on the left tells a specific story. This one in the middle has a little bit more interesting or a, more of a different story. And so does this one on the right have quite a lot going on. Because this situation looks a little bit weird. So we can diagram these areas and use what we already know about relative age along with some things about fossils and we can really find out what happened at that place. Alright, so now into the real meat of the situation. Sedimentary strata. This word strata simply means a series of layers of sedimentary rocks. And different types of rocks when we start looking at diagrams are going to be in different symbols. So here you can see lots of different layers. Here, this would be one particular type of rock, another type of rock, another, and another. So we have four specific layers on this diagram to indicate the layers that you might see here. Now obviously our diagrams that we are going to use are gonna be a lot simpler than what you would see on this side, but they represent those same things. So there's a, one of our two laws that we're going to talk about are the law of original horizontality. And that states that sedimentary rocks, when they are originally created, are created in flat horizontal layers. So if you see a diagram that looks like this, you know that they should, were, this is how they were originally laid down. So we would know that layer A, then B, then C, then D was created. If you look out here in a field, if you see some actual sedimentary rock layers, you would know that these are all quite flat layers. You don't see a lot of waviness or anything like that, that these layers were laid down in just this sort of fashion. And that's because gravity sort of makes them do that. The law of superposition states that older rock layers are located beneath younger rock layers in a series of undisturbed sedimentary strata. You may recall this from the last lesson we did on the relative age and absolute age. But the key thing to remember here is that this only applies in undisturbed sedimentary strata. If you see in a little bit, we're going to see some diagrams where we have some bending and folding. Those have been disturbed. And so we want to make sure that these it only applies in undisturbed layers where the oldest are down here and the youngest are up here at the top. Now, unconformities. Sometimes when you look at a diagram, one of these sedimentary strata diagrams, you'll find a squiggly line instead of a straight line. Most of these are straight lines. This one gets squiggly. So what that means is that you have an unconformity. 
And unconformities basically just mean that there is a gap in the history recorded in a series of sedimentary strata. So, something happened there. Generally, it's very often weathering and erosion, but something is actually missing. We don't know what happened there at all, but we know that something happened between when this layer was laid down and when this layer was laid down. So that's something that we have to account for. We can't just ignore it, and we can't just assume that these two layers were laid down directly one after the other. Now when you're looking at these sedimentary strata, either the actual strata here or the strata diagrams over here, you may see this crack and that corresponding line over here on the diagram. What that is, is a fault. It's a break or a crack in rock layers that cause the layers to be offset from one another. And it's always to, important to remember that when you see this sort of a situation over here, that these rocks, these layers, lined up at one point, and they were shifted one up and one down in order to get into this particular uh, orientation. So, could the rocks be broken before they were deposited? No, obviously they could not. So they had to be laid down, then they were broken. Another thing you may see on one of these diagrams is an igneous intrusion. And remember, igneous rock is coming from magma below the Earth's surface. Sometimes it'll come up through from the Earth's mantle It'll melt through some sedimentary rock layers, and it'll get to a certain point where it's far enough away from the heat source where it starts to cool and solidifies and forms igneous rock. What's well, important to remember is that in order for it to melt through and cool and not form just a volcano at the surface that's spewing magma and lava everywhere, that it, these rock layers had to already exist. So we would have rock layer A, then B was deposited, then C, then D, and then we would see rock layer, pardon me, rock E, which is the igneous intrusion, would come after that. Index fossils were already uh, discussed in the fossils lessons that we talked about, but it's important to know that these can really tell us a lot about uh, sedimentary strata. So if we have a bunch of layers of rock like we have here, and you have some index fossils in there, if we know that this is 300 million years old, 300 million years ago, that tells us that this rock layer that it's housed within is 300 million years old, approximately. Then the layers above, we can automatically deduce that they are younger than 300 million years, and the layers below would be older than 300 million years. So it doesn't give us an exact absolute age, but it does give us more of an idea than just older versus younger. Alright guys, here's where it starts to get really tricky. Well, when you have pressure on tectonic plates or just on some particular types of rocks, if they're moving towards each other, you may end up having rocks that are starting to bend and fold like this. So if you see something that's not laid down in those nice flat horizontal layers like this, but instead is wavy, like so, you would know that those layers were deposited, A, then B, then C, then D, but our law of original horizontality says they were laid down in flat horizontal layers, so after A, B, C, and D were deposited, then you had bending, folding, and tilting happening. So let's take a look at this particular diagram and we're going to give it a shot to work youngest to oldest or oldest to youngest either way. So what do we think happened first? Well first we probably had layer one. So that would be the oldest. After that, uh oh, I see a squiggly line here. And what does this squiggly line mean? Well that's an unconformity. Then, we have what's next on top, the law of superposition states that layer 2 must have been deposited on top, then layer 3, then layer 4, then layer 5, still using the law of superposition, then layer 6, and finally, 
we have this igneous intrusion which cuts through all six of those layers so we know that that igneous intrusion must be last. And now we're back to our essential question, which is how can we tell the geologic history or story of an area using sedimentary rock layers and fossil evidence? You should be able to know using the laws of superposition, original horizontality, all of those types of things, knowing about unconformities, intrusions, index fossils and faults, all of the order of events of a particular area, geologically speaking. If you have any questions, be sure to write them down and take them to your teacher for your discussion time.